Through a myriad of initiatives throughout the state and the world, Special Olympics is a movement that's changing attitudes and changing lives by inspiring inclusion, understanding, and respect for people of all abilities in all aspects of life. I'm Eric Clemens for Comcast Newsmakers in Comcast's Connecticut studio. And joining me is Bo Doherty, president of Special Olympics Connecticut. Bo, welcome. Thank you, Eric. It's great to be here. All right, great to have you here. First things first, what are some of the misconceptions about Special Olympics today? Uh, the biggest one is that we're a one-shot deal in the Summer Games. We've done a very good job over the years in our world history of uh, letting people know that we do those games. But the b bottom line is that we're seasonal in nature. We do over 75 tournaments uh, that lead into those games or even high school and middle school events. So it's a big misconception that we just do one thing during the year. We do every week we have different tournaments going on. All right. Second question here. The difference between... Special Olympics traditional sports programs and its unified sports program, which I understand you helped found. That's correct. With Eunice Kennedy Shriver, 1983, there was a decision made at that time to uh, change things up. In our traditional program, you would see only athletes competing. In unified sports, we have teams that are made up of non-disabled people on the same teams with Special Olympians, and they practice for eight weeks, then they right. compete against a bunch of other teams. and. Uh, the bottom line is that what, what occurs is that there's a big bond that occurs between the non-disabled person and our athletes, and the end result is sometimes friendships and a lot of things. As an example, Wilton High many years ago, the football captain who was on one of those teams, you know, looked over and saw a bunch of special athletes sitting, eating lunch, and he grabbed him and said, you're on my unified team. Come on, guys, you sit and eat lunch with me. Those little things mean a lot to uh, people. How is Special Olympics Connecticut making an impact on the lives of the athletes that participate and everyone else who participates in the programs, not just on the field, but most, most importantly, even off the playing field? Well, you know, I, I think in the early years, you know, Mrs. Shriver, the big thing was getting people out of institutions. Then we really got serious about sports, put a lot of focus in on that. As an example, like we have athletes that have done, one athlete I'm thinking of right now has done 26 marathons. Wow. So we've, we've helped there, different parts of the world, we need to do a better job. But the bottom line is for us, we're really trying to use sport as a mechanism to bring the non-disabled public that are not paid staff of our athletes or family members into the mix to be friends with. And sport is a great barrier breaker and allows us to uh, bring people together. And hopefully, you know, we have friends or partners of, of the athletes who pick them up, bring them to the movies and things like that, which are very significant in their lives because sometimes they're quite isolated. What are some of the ways in which people, organizations, and businesses can line up and support the Special Olympics mission and uh, your initiatives? Well, if you look at all the games that we do in this state, 90% of them are run by a company. So as an example, Comcast uh, runs uh, our Urban Youth Day with Yale students. And uh, usually it's a team building exercise. So many of the companies that come out, they might do it to get their brand name known. But usually it's a great way to get employees to come out and to see the end result, to work with our athletes, to do different things. And then they go back and, you know, in a uh, very motivated. Well, less than a minute left. So uh, briefly here, you've been a part of this organization for a remarkable 25 plus years. How have you seen people's attitudes towards individuals with intellectual disabilities change over that period? Well, when I first worked, it was in the wards of an institution. So if you get, that's, a, so you look now, and, and I look at some of our uh, people that we service and they're in school systems. That wasn't the case back then. Um, you, you see the non-disabled public embrace our athletes in the early years. You know, you didn't want a group home uh, on your road. Um, there were firestorms everywhere. There was a lot of misconceptions about our athletes and being eternal children, or even worried about you know what's going to happen to your kid on the same in the same neighborhood. So I've seen a huge change in people's you know belief systems about our athletes. Bo, well, thank you so much for taking some time out with us. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank and you. thank you for joining us on this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Eric Clemens. We'll see you next time. Thank you.